We are live episode. Guys, we are live episode. I think it's 17. Whoa. 18. Episode 18. So excited. I'm going to be uh, taking you back to Europe. Headed to talk to one of my friends who is from the United States, but she's now currently living in Paris, France. And um, France is one of those countries that uh, it's it's pretty much on lockdown as well. She has officially joined. Let me get Jen in here. Let's see. Just waiting for her to join. Self, say where you are, and then uh, we can tell the story on how we met because it's a that's a fun story as well. Okay. We yeah, we do. We go back to college to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. my name is Jen. Um, I live right outside of Paris. So basically, basically in Paris, I'm married to a French guy. So that's probably why I'm here. <laughs> I teach a lot of dance and fitness classes in Paris. And I met Brent at TCU when we were in college together. Woohoo! Go Frogs! The, the yes, dorm rock. does not exist anymore. Oh, it's so sad. Oh, it's crazy. And it's now a parking garage, but that's okay. That's what oh. sad. But Jen, thank you so much for taking the time to, to chat. I know that you can have a crazy schedule sometimes. But uh, okay, so let's let's start with what's the situation like in, in your neck of the woods with, with this COVID-19? Okay, well, so... About two weeks ago, maybe almost three now, it was March 14th or 15th yeah. when things started getting a little weird and people were like, okay, there's an outbreak. Um, I think pretty soon we're going to have to go into quarantine, like shut down. Um, I was in Bordeaux at the time, which was kind of funny. We, we went to Bordeaux for the weekend and over the weekend, like Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, it was like, oh, okay, actually, we're going into quarantine, like, Tuesday or something. And I was supposed to come back to Paris on Monday on, like, an 8 a.m. train with um, my husband and my two sister-in-laws. And we're like, oh, my gosh, what if we don't make it? Like, this is yeah. crazy. We, we shouldn't even come on this trip. We should have just stayed home. But, like, we really wanted to go to Bordeaux. That's where all the good wine is. Yeah. For <laughs> <laughs> so we had this trip planned. And so, um, okay, I think they announced Sunday. They were like, okay there's going to be some sort of quarantine um, uh, starting probably Monday or Tuesday, but the president was going to talk on Monday or Tuesday, something like that. Um, luckily we got the train back on Monday and Monday morning. And that was weird. Everybody on the train was like wearing like masks and like covered yeah. up. Cause we had to be together for two and a half hours, like on this train from Bordeaux to Paris. And we're like, this is horrible. We're all going to get it. <laughs> but thankfully we're fine. I'm fine. We're all okay. <laughs> so after that, that's when the president Macron, he, he announced that we are going to, Oh no, that's what it was. Sunday. It was Sunday night. They announced that there was, they were closing all the, the restaurants and everything Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Saturday. No, it was Sunday. Okay. Now I'm remembering Saturday they closed all the restaurants, all the public spaces. They were like, okay, at midnight, these are all closed. Yeah. Um, restaurants and it's, and, uh, we were actually out that Saturday night because it was my, uh, sister-in-law's, um, housewarming party in Bordeaux. So we're like, well, if we're going to be stuck in her, if she's going to be stuck in her house for the next like two weeks, let's go out. And so it was like <laughs> midnight in Bordeaux. Everyone was out. Like everyone was out, which is very stupid, obviously, because we didn't understand like the, right. the of the situation they're like if we're gonna get stuck inside let's all go out so people were okay. partying at midnight everything they're like everyone out you know and like try telling french people to like go home <laughs> like they're like no way so that was pretty funny hey. um, but yeah then 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 after all the it was a pretty quick turnaround so about, about 24 hours or 48 hours later after they closed all those all of the public places that's when they yeah. announced the two-week quarantine that's wild. And so you guys, so what, what's quarantine been like? I mean, is it total lockdown? What's it, what, how, how strict is it in France? So at this point, um, we have to stay home. Uh, nobody goes to work unless they have a sort of like special job where they need to go to work. Yeah. And there's a list of them. If you go on the government website, okay. um, that does not include me. I'm a fitness instructor. That was, that was over pretty quick. My husband's a landscape architect also that was over. It's not like a necessary job. So we're home. Um, we 
can only go outside um, to go to the grocery store, uh, maybe go work out like in the vicinity of one kilometer around our apartment yeah. um, for an hour. There's an hour maximum. And they know the time and whether or not we've been out for more than an hour because we have to go outside with a piece of paper stating like our name, our address, um, what time we left, uh, the purpose of our voyage, if you can yeah. call it that. Yeah. Um, and if we don't have this piece of paper, you can be fined. It started out like to a fine of like 35 euros. Now it's up to 100 and I think 135, something like that, because people – obviously just didn't respect that and went out and do whatever they want. And now they're really cracking down. Um, so you really have to say when you left, what you're doing, you have to have like a piece of identity on you so they can know what's going on. And yeah. yeah. Well, is there, have they, so as the government, is there an end in sight yet? Or have do you, like, what was the latest news? Any updates recently? Um, well, I don't think at this moment there's an end in sight, unfortunately, because things haven't gotten any better. I know the last update um, is like, okay, like I think yesterday we had maybe close to 500 more deaths from the virus, yeah. unfortunately. Um, and uh, maybe like over 50,000 cases, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a lot. And I think it's going to take more than two weeks, obviously, for that to start, for the whole quarantine yeah. thing to start to take effect. Um, it was pretty scary there for a moment for the the hospitals because um, they don't have enough equipment, especially in big cities in Paris, for example. They don't really have enough equipment to deal with this sort of situation, like rubber gloves, masks, yeah. things to protect their their people, like their nurses and stuff. So that was like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? I talked to some of my friends who are doctors and they're like, yeah, I have to keep the same mask all day. You should not be doing that. You should be changing your mask with everybody. every patient they're supposed to be changing. Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty, pretty hard. But uh, thankfully there have been a lot of like donations and a lot of um, uh, things put in place to raise funds for equipment. And then another thing that I saw this morning is very interesting is that they're shipping, like, or shipping, I guess, they've put, like, um, people from Paris on trains that are sick, like, train, yeah. uh, like public trains, but, like, now are equipped with medical equipment to take them out to hospitals that are more in, like, um, you know, in the country a little bit more, yeah. where they have more space. So that's interesting. So they're actually shipping, or, like, deplacing people out. Where yeah, 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 yeah. yeah out of the give like literally social distancing them giving them more wow that's the first country i've heard india so india has converted trains into hospitals but they're really in them on the trains is what i've been told versus shipping them out to the countryside that's wild so what what are what's selling out like have you been to the grocery store what's selling out in in france um yes i went to the grocery store like the day before mm, i think everything's fine yeah. Right now, but you know, like that whole scare two weeks ago before everyone was going to go into quarantine, everyone weirdly bought toilet paper and pasta. The, okay. uh, same, same in France, then, yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, people, have you ever gone camping? Like, you don't need, okay. So that was just the funniest thing. That was the least thing we were, the least thing that we were concerned about. Yeah. Um, but I think now everything's fine. Like there's like a normal pace of things. You go to the grocery store again with this, uh, this document stating what you're doing and everything's well stocked. So thank God for the people who are, are working right now. They're doing a great job keeping us feeling safe. Um, yeah. you have to wait in line outside the grocery store, you know, like two meters in, in between each person. Mm -hmm. Um, and they only let a certain amount of people inside the store, but, other than that, I mean, there's there's already like chocolate for Easter all over the place in the grocery stores too. Like, okay, yeah, so still keeping up with the holidays. That's good. That's a great thing. Uh, yeah, interesting. So, what what have you been doing to uh, to pass the time in in quarantine? Well, um, let's see. For me, it's been really fun because I've been teaching a lot of classes, but either sometimes live on Instagram Live for other for other fun companies, restaurants, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Or um, making videos and having like smaller private classes on Zoom, you know, that like conferencing app yes. thing. And that yeah. has been so cool. That has been incredible because, okay, the first time I did a Zoom class, it was like totally my first time. I was like, I don't know what this is. I had like 
15 people. And then I gave, two weeks later, I gave my Zoom class this afternoon at lunch, and I had like 50 people from no all over the world. Yeah, cool. I've connected with people from Rio, from Martinique, the Reunion Islands, of course, in America, Chicago, New York, all over France. Oh like, yeah. that's cool. I never would have done that, you know, while teaching in a studio in Paris. So that has just opened up like a, a cool way of exchanging. And you know why I love Zoom is because I can see the other people. And for me, like yeah. a huge part of teaching is like the community exchange aspect. Right. So like Zoom, like I can swipe and be like, hey, lift your head a little bit, keep your hips low. Like, you know, like really I can be, be there with them and that has been like really exciting for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's amazing how we're so lucky with technology. I mean, like with the, the, the flu of what was it, 1918, 1916, whatever it was, like everyone, if you we were trapped inside, I mean, what, what do you, you know, what are you going to, your messenger pigeon is going to fly out and tell people, you know, to, to exchange communication. So we're so lucky in that aspect. We are. We're so, so lucky. All right. Well, let's dive into traveling. Uh, France is a very hot spot, specifically Paris, super hot spot when people come to Europe. So in your opinion, what are the three must-dos when someone comes to visit France? Okay. So, um, of course, visiting Paris is a hot spot and something to do. Um, I mean, there's so many things, so many guidebooks to visiting Paris. You know what to do. I, yeah. if I'm going to talk about something, I would like to talk about going outside of Paris because mm -hmm. France is such a beautiful country. Like, it's... It's a tiny country, but in this country you have the ocean and you have the mountains, you have the, like the forest, you have white sandy beaches, you have rocky beaches. It's just like such a cool, cool country. Yeah. So I think what I would suggest to do is probably go up to Normandy. So I love yeah. Normandy. Normandy yeah. is beautiful. It's huge too. So in Normandy, of course, you have the beaches of uh, like D-Day. So that's yeah. a really interesting place so because, it, it, first of it, all, yeah. yeah, have you been? I did. I, that was uh, the other spot that I had to go when I was in Paris and luckily was able to make it there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Super interesting and touching place because, okay, there's the memorial, the museum yeah. um, for the Second World War, which is just mind-blowing. But then the other thing is just the nature uh, of the beaches. So there are many different be beaches that you can visit. Most notably, I think, is Omaha Beach that people go to. But, I mean, you go out there, there's silence, there's, like, the white sand, but it's also, like, a hill, like, a grassy hill yeah. leading to the beach, and then this crazy blue ocean. And there are, like, flowers stuck into the sand, like, live roses and stuff to remember all the soldiers there. There are different monuments. Um, for me, it was super touching because I – there was uh, one um, sort of monument thing like this that was created for all the American soldiers, and – it just was so touching to see all of these Americans that were there. And I was like, I'm American too, you know? And I saw all these names I'd never seen in France, like Bob, Roger, Ben, <laughs> Kevin, yeah. Mike, like here on this soil gave their lives. And I was just like, wow, you know, I felt really, really connected to America yeah. Yeah. at that point. So I, that, I totally suggest that. And that beach, I tell you what, it's just like, it's such a beautiful and peaceful area. It's so, yeah. and it's just I think, like, back on D-Day, one of the most bloody battles of World War II. That's what, exactly. I mean, it, it, it was, it just, it was jaw dropping walking through there and, and just imagining what those 18, 19, 20 year old kids were, you know, yeah. for freedom in World War II. So yeah, definitely, definitely a must see when you get to France. What, what is it? It's like a four, is it three, four hour drive from Paris? Probably something like that. Yeah. yeah I think something like that. It's not super far. I mean, you can drive the entire country in like less than a day, you know. So <laughs> yeah, so everything's close enough. Worth worth getting a rental car and uh, to go. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. And what else, any any other? So we got we got Normandy. Any other spots? Your favorite? What are yeah, your other two? A few more. So one thing that everyone should do, which is so fun, is trying to follow like a wine. It's called the la route des vins, de vins or whatever. It's like the route the wine route in like the summertime and it's in burgundy france and you can drive all the way from like paris to dijon and follow like um a, a route that has all the wine caves on it and you can go visit all of these crazy chateaux like castles 
Castle, yeah. castle, every like two seconds, castle here, castle there, beautiful. And you're like, what is this place? And then there's also like uh, the vineyards in between the castles. So you're just like driving and you're looking around and you're seeing mountains or like hills and hills of wine vineyards and then a crazy castle. And of course you go and you do a taste test and then you do this and then you go and you buy wine. And it's just, it's like so beautiful. The, the French countryside in Burgundy is amazing and very good wine. So I like really you yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, my my yeah. husband French from Burgundy was like, and you have to not take the highways when you do this. You just have to like put on your GPS, no highways, and you just go through all these tiny villages. It's just so quaint and amazing. I suggest doing that. Okay. Yeah. And then the last thing, and there's so many other things to do, but these are just things that I've done that I've really appreciated. Um, is going down to like the Bordeaux area. So it's okay. like a small city. Um, well, it's smaller than than Paris towards the south is not, it's not the south of France. So I'm not there yet. Okay. Go down the Bordeaux and then just like a couple, I mean, less than an hour away is Arcachon. It's the beach and it's beautiful. It's the white sandy blue water beach. And in Arcachon, you have this thing called the Dune de Pila. And it's like this giant white sand dune. Just this, mm -hmm. and you feel like you're in like the desert or something, just a white sand dune. So in Arcachon, there's that. The white yeah, yeah. sand that you like slide down, you have a picnic, it's crazy. And then also at Arcachon, right across the bay is Cap Ferré. And it's this beautiful, tiny, like community. Yeah, I think it's yeah, very, yeah. I don't know. I've been there once with a friend. It was super cool. But like, it's just, it's just like a cool beachy area. You can take a boat from Arcachon to Cap Ferré. You eat uh, oysters, you know, fresh oh. from the water. It's just such a crazy, it's just a beautiful experience. And it's a totally different experience from the beaches in the north of France and Normandy. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cool. A great. And, and good segue, speaking of oysters, good segue into food. What has yes. been your favorite French dish? I mean, the, the French will claim to have some of the best food in the world. There is some, like when I was there, ate very, very well. In your opinion, if you could only pick one dish to eat the rest of your life from France, what are you picking? <laughs> Can I choose two, like a salty one and a sweet one? Sure, sure. We could choose two, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. If you're French, and if you're not French, I hope you try this, but if you're French, you must love raclette. So raclette is literally like melted cheese. It's yep. so good, it's so good. So it's like uh, everyone, every household in France probably has a raclette machine, and it's like a griddle with like these these like little things that you stick in that you put chunks of cheese on and it melts and you take it out and you just pour melted cheese on like potatoes or uh, if you're feeling like healthy, you can pour it on like broccoli or sweet potatoes, but otherwise you just pour the melted cheese on like meats, you know, charcuterie, sausage. Oh, it's so good. I love raclette. So that's my salty thing. Yeah. Oh, so good. Okay, sweet Very thing good. that I love um, that only happens uh, you know, once a year. And if, like, my husband knows any, if any of his, like, sisters are watching this, it's la galette des rois. So <laughs> you can only what eat it that? in January. Ah, okay. um, it is this sort of, like, pastry cake um, that's with marzipan. Ah, see, she said galette. Yes, the galette. Okay, <laughs> with marz marzipan. So it's, like, the almond paste. It's like layer of like the pastry crust, like the flaky stuff, like flaky pastry, then filled with like almond, almond paste and like butter. Yeah. And then another layer of like the pastry and then you bake it and hidden inside this delicious cake is like a little, like they, it's called a fev, like a, a favor. And maybe it's like a little star in porcelain or like a little person or something. And the person who gets the piece with that, part is like the king and so it's called the, the king cake the gala de roi because it's when the wise men come after christmas so it's like in january you know a couple of weeks because king's cake in uh, like new orleans right so they do a king's cake kind of a variation because of the french influence there so very similar but it sounds like very different ingredients a, a much much better version in france oh it's so good it's it's like absolutely amazing when it's time I get one, I eat them a lot every day. And when I say, I say it's time because here, like French are very traditional people and 
You yep. can't eat this cake when it's not the time of the year. So if you think like that one month, January, I don't know, a couple of weeks there, you are allowed to eat this, but when it's over, it's over. And if you go and make it or buy it, that's shame. So you yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. Well, good to know. All right, so to get the, I need to come in January. I, I will make sure yeah. to do a time. I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of winter, but maybe maybe for the cake, it's, it's worth it. What for the about, cake, it's worth about, it. What about weird food? What's the what's the weirdest thing you've eaten in, in France? Mm, so, because you've traveled a lot, you know that weird is sub sub subjective. Exactly. Very true. Yes. <laughs> and um, something that's totally normal for people, for one person might not be normal for another person. Um, but I've definitely tried a lot of different things for me. Are different things that I never ate before. Like, for example, things that I've only eaten in, in France would be, of course, escargot, snails, yep. which turns out to be delicious because very it's very garlicky, garlic pesto-y. Um, eh, cow tongue. <laughs> cow tongue, yes, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm like, it was, honestly, the flavors are always really great in all of these things because fr um, French cuisine, like, they really know how to cook stuff well. Yeah. I think it's all about the cuisson, so the way it's cooked. Um, the seasonings, I don't know, it's always really good, really well done. How do they, uh, how, how do they prepare the, the cow tongue? I had it in like a soup. Okay. Because in yeah. Mexico they have like cow tongue tacos, which are quite nice, but probably very different ways to, uh, to eat cow tongue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there must be different ways. <laughs> oh, gosh. I mean, it was okay. I don't know if I'd do it again, but I definitely would eat smells again. Of course, I've had a, like a boudon noir, it's blood sausage. It, mm -hmm. I think the English version is like blood pudding or something. That actually Perfect. is really good too. Um, I mean, the name of course will turn you off, but I don't know. It's pretty good with like some apples and stuff. Yeah. Um, there's this thing that I just can't eat that I've tried a few times, but it's uh, andouillette. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Andouillette. It's like, um, uh, it's like a sausage, but made out of like intest intestines and stuff. <laughs> Okay. And you don't like what 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 you don't like, you don't eat it. Um, I I wouldn't eat it. It's this it smells really intense. It smells kind of like rotting food, like rotting meat. But some people love it. Like some yeah. people really do and some people can even say that the stronger something smells, like the stronger the cheese is, the stronger the the meat smells, the better it is. <laughs> yeah. So Okay, yeah. well, to each their own. What about, so I, I have one that comes to mind, uh, tartare, right? And oh, so yeah. Steak tartare, but also there's horse tartare, right? Isn't that, I've heard that people eat that. So it's literally raw meat. You put an egg, I think it was chives, mix them all together, then eat it. I enjoy, I did try it. I did enjoy it. I, I really don't mind tartare. Uh, but I think I had the beef version. I don't think I had the true, like, horse. Okay, I version. did not know that. So that's something that's that's new to me if people eat horse. Yeah. anywhere in the world <laughs> yeah. but maybe i don't know so like beef tartare yes i honestly i thought it was so good so the funny thing is when i first came to france i was recently coming off being a vegetarian so you oh. can imagine that changed very quickly when i was introduced yeah. to all these meat heavy dishes, and one of them was tartare so that's basically raw meat raw hamburger meat and like a patty shape and then again, you can have it with a raw egg on top. Um, I thought it was pretty good and I still eat it. When the summer comes around, I'm going to be sitting on a terrace at a cafe somewhere eating tartare de boeuf with nice. fries. It's really nice. Yeah, I mean, guys, just imagine, it's like, like you said, a hamburger patty just uncooked. It's just sitting on the plate ready for you to eat it. So it's, it's, it's worth crazy. trying. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't mind it at all. Um, all right, so. Being an American living in, in France now, what stereotypes did you have in your mind when you went that have proven to be true and then those that have been, you know, proven to be false? Hmm. Well, gosh, that's, that's tough. <laughs> I do live here and I, anyone's going to be watching this video, but I'll be as honest as possible. Don't get yourself in trouble. <laughs> I want to get myself in trouble. Like, in reality, I live here and I've chosen to live here. I have even gone as far as marrying someone who lives here. And that's a huge confirmation that I love this place and I love the people here. Um, every country, of course, presents difficulties no matter where you go. 
Um, I think for me, the biggest thing that was hard is just like um, uh, social relations or relationship things that are very different than in America, especially from like the South. I feel like I was very much used to um, people like, like when you pass by people in the street where I'm from, like I went to school in Texas, like you, um, I spent time in Oklahoma. I lived there. Um, when you pass somebody on the street, you say hi, or you make eye contact. And even in New York, like in Brooklyn, that's where I was born. Yeah. People, when you walk on the street, you like say, hi, how's it going? Have a good day. Here you just don't do that. Like you don't make eye contact with people. And at first I was like, oh, this is so isolating. But then I'm just like, well, that's just the way it is. You don't. And it's totally fine. But that was really hard for me. I, I felt very much like, like I didn't feel like people liked me or rejected and stuff. And also people maybe don't show, like they're not overly interested in you until you actually become friends. So in a way it's very honest. Like when you meet people for the first time, they're like, cool. They're not going to ask you a lot of questions. This is, again, this is all just from my experience. I'm not yeah. saying everyone's going to have the same experiences, but I mean, right. I did live, I mean, I've been here for five years now and at first um, it was pretty much like hard to like make good friends. Cause I felt like I wasn't connecting with anybody uh, just cause it was just a different way of like getting to know people. But right. after a while, once you spend time with people, like you get to know each other and you become friends, which that's the way, like, it sounds completely normal, but where we're from, where I'm from, it's like, you're automatically best friends. And like, yeah, exactly. yeah you love each other, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. That was just like a huge difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, culturally, no, that's good to know. I mean, right? Like, I mean, there there is certain stereotypes that people say about the French. I mean, I've luckily have met some amazing French people um, on my travels around the world. Um, but yeah, I mean, East Country, East Country is so different. And so culturally, when it comes to making friends, good to know, you really got to put in the effort in France to, uh, to get those true, genuine friends. Or it's the opposite. Don't put just like, don't make it so intense. Like, don't Take, oh, take your time. St take a step yeah, back. Yeah, don't put in the effort. Like, it's not, it's everything comes naturally, you know? Like, I think that's something I've learned. Like, don't overexert yourself or don't be like, oh my gosh, this person isn't texting me or like, I don't have friends because blah, 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 blah. No, it's like, it, things come naturally here. It's like a slower kind of, it's just slower as far as that sort of thing. Like, you're not going to make best friends in like one second. Um, and in the end, it's, for me, it seems like very solid, true relationships with like the French people that I've become friends with, yeah. you know? Yeah. What about, what about the stereotype of the, uh, the French having the best bread in the world? Do you, do you agree with that one? Yeah, I think okay. so. <laughs> yes. Well, okay. So I never really ate much bread in yeah. America. I mean, my whole entire, like I've changed so much in living in this country <laughs> Again, my last, I think the last time I lived in America, I was like a vegetarian and I didn't eat bread and I had all of these weird, like, I don't know, like that's, you don't just eat, you don't eat bread and butter and cheese and yeah. stuff like that where, when you're like a healthy person. Um, but here I, I do. And like the bread I think has a lot less sugar and it's even a lot more natural. I think there are a lot less ingredients. Um, like the baguettes are usually just baked the day of, and it's, it's like, they're so good. Like, I mean, it's, it's just fresh. You're going to go, you're going to get a baguette. It has a certain amount of ingredient ingredients in it. It doesn't have pres like all of these like things to preserve it. So in one day it's going to be hard as a rock and you can't eat anymore, but it's meant to be eaten right then and there. Exactly. So, yeah. It's yeah. pretty good. So what's, what's been, what's been your favorite thing about living in France? Let's see. Um, well, I think living in Paris has been pretty cool. I mean, I just moved about six months ago. I just moved right outside of Paris, but I still work in Paris and I still go there every day. Yeah. Um, um, living in Paris is cool because it's beautiful. Oh, and, and say we're speaking too fast. We oh. can, we'll slow it down. <laughs> I can slow it down. Hey, it's because I'm I'm speaking my like mother tongue. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, bah! if this were in French, je parlerais beaucoup plus lentement. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. So I love Paris because the architecture is beautiful. 
Yes. Um, I have these wonderful memories of riding my bike um, to work, you know, like over the Seine, over the river, and just being like struck with like awe because there's this beautiful church, like the cathedral on the side, and then the, pa the Palace of Justice, which is like the big courthouse with, with beautiful golden gates. And there's just so much to see. And then you ride on the sand and you see like the golden dome of the invalids or whatever. And then of course there's the Eiffel Tower, but yes. it's just it's just beautiful. There's so many sights to see. And then I just, in general, Paris is a, a gorgeous city. So I've, is, I've been really lucky to live here. Paris. Paris is very hyped, right? I would say it's one of the most hyped cities in the world, especially when it comes to Europe. But in my opinion, it lived up to the hype. It, it blew my mind. I, w I w really, really enjoyed my time. And of course, you helped make it great. It was the people there that, that really helped me enjoy my time. But like the Eiffel Tower, when it lights up on the hour, when it sparkles at night, I mean, it, it really is magical. It's, it's kind of magical. I don't know what to say. Like, it's a magical place. And like, I remember when you were here, we had a good time. We were like sitting at a terrace uh, on a terrace. So a balcony all in the summertime. That is what you do. Like when it's beautiful outside, you're just sitting outside with like a, on a, like a little table and chairs, you know, drinking a glass of wine or having a beer and you're not doing anything. You're just there. And it's yeah. so, so nice. Like I, yeah, I, I love that. Watch it. People watching, you see that, you know, a, a city that's very alive. Now it's Paris is a great spot. All right, one one more question for you. Um, so, what what's what's like? What's one fact, one thing that would surprise people about either Paris or France in general? Hmm. Uh, gosh. Yeah, I should have prepared for this question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um. Okay, I don't know, Gab. What's surprising about France? <laughs> <laughs> um something i think oh gosh i don't really know somebody anybody <laughs> okay i'm thinking because there's so many things like in my mind right now that i'm like i don't know if people know these things i've lived here for five years i don't know um let's see i guess maybe uh, uh mm, wine's really cheap here <laughs> i think about that, that yeah, yeah. The Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa is smaller than you would imagine. That surprised okay, me. Okay, okay. There we go. That, Thank you for, for saving us all for yeah. my land excuse. The Mona Lisa is very tiny. And in fact, okay, fun fact. I don't know if it's still still there anymore, but the Mona Lisa was when I went to the, to the Louvre a couple years ago when I first got here. It was like facing this huge painting that was like, 65,000 times massive. massive yes it was this huge painting and like you walk in and you see this tiny Mona Lisa but you really see just like iPads and stuff taking pictures and you turn around and you see this masterpiece that just blows your mind because it's like this huge like uh, I think like dinner scene or something and yep. there there are so many like paintings in that one painting and you're just like oh well this is worth seeing like, I, I, I hope people turn around when they go see the Mona Lisa, they turn around and they see this huge painting that is just worth your time. <laughs> this is a museum in general. It's really nice. A lot, a lot of huge, lots of exhibits. It, it got me stoked. There was a lot of Egyptian art there. And I got yeah. my tour in. Yeah. in so, yeah. Heck yeah. Well, cool. The Louvre is super cool. Stuff, guys, tiny. It's very small. It's much smaller than you'd imagine. So, what? What is Paris? No, the Mona Lisa. Oh, the Mona Lisa. Paris is huge. No, the Mona Lisa oh, was no, no, no. Okay, yeah, the Mona Lisa is super tiny. But, okay, if we're going to talk about museums, something that's really cool about France is that a lot of the museums are, are free. And so that has been really cool. Especially, so many museums are free until you're, like, 26 or something, and you have, like, a, either a visa, like a European visa or a European passport. That's really cool because I think that opens the doors to so many young people to go and appreciate this like world art it's art from all over the world so that's really really neat and then the other thing is that in paris alone there are so many museums that specialize in millions of different things so there's the louvre but then besides that you have like my favorite was le petit palais because first of all the the permanent collection is free and it's just a beautiful building it has like these gold this gold like gate when you walk in and like a beautiful courtyard with flowers and these beautiful paintings. Like, I mean, the Pitti Belle is gorgeous. So, I mean, Paris, you go, you pick your museum, you spend an afternoon in one museum, you go, you have your like wine on the terrace and the next day you pick another museum, you have your wine on the terrace. Like, it's just, 
It's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Wait, and I totally forgot. It's Paris with the uh, the catacombs, right? Oh yeah, you know that's, there there, there that's are the catacombs as well. Yes. Yeah, um, that's funny. I've never been there, and I lived I oh, lived like right to next to it. To I've go. never been. And right next to the catacombs, they just opened up a museum that is in memory of uh, the Second World War also. Oh, and wow. I heard it's absolutely, absolutely amazing and it's free. So it's actually more about like, I think, um, like deportation and stuff like that, since many people in France were deported during this time. But wow. I heard that this museum is amazing. So it's like, they're the catacombs and right across the street is this brand new museum. That, huh. So if anyone goes to Paris and I mean, whenever we can travel again, goes to the catacombs, they, ha they should top it off with this museum. Cause I heard it's just a really cool experience. Yeah. 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 Good to know guys. If you don't know what the catacombs are, it's just a massive system of tunnels under the city where they started collecting the bodies of people. It was from the plague time, right? Basically they were just putting all containing okay. the body. It's just bones and skulls. It's wild, and it's it's basically art, art with human bones. It's it, as weird as it sounds. It's beautiful, worth doing. I mean, book your ticket. Okay. It, 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 the lines get long, get there early, but the catacombs. It's uh, it's pretty surprising when you walk there. Very eerie. There's been a lot of writers and poets who've talked about being in the catacombs. So so worth checking out. Jen, thank you so so much. It's always so good to see. You. It's been way too long. Hey, um, it's so good to see you too. I give, give, well, actually, I have one more question. So now that you're married. Are you going to get a French passport? How's that? Will you get EU citizenship? Are you, it probably a, such idea? a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so funny enough at this time, um, my visa for my, like my, uh, wedding visa, my appointment was this week, but it was canceled. Oh, <laughs> oh. The coronavirus. and so they like send me this thing and I'm just like, what does that mean? What do I do? So anyway, I just said that to the entire world. But hey, they canceled my visa appointment. So I'm like, well. It's on there. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> okay, but actually in reality, I can have like, uh, so my first time around, I'll get this like one year visa or two year visa or something like that to be able yeah. to live here and okay. work here as a like a married to a French person. And right. then after we're married i think for five years or four years i got to check that out i can actually ask for french citizenship nice and so if that happens i will have to submit like this huge dossier so this file of different things um basically so they see everything about me you know just what i've done here for the past five years um also like about my husband and stuff like that yeah um joint bank accounts just stuff like that and then i will have to have an interview you know, so they'll have to check my French level. I have to be able to speak French. Um, they'll ask me, uh, like, questions. So there's, like, a, I think a bank of, of like, 500 questions about, like, French history and politics that they will ask, that they can ask me. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. I'll have to study that. You're going to really then, have to study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, earn it. you have to study that. And, I, and uh, you have to, to be able to sing the Marseillaise, which is, like, the French national anthem. Nice. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably do it. It'd be really great to have like a French passport and an American passport. Well, that opens up so many more countries that you can travel to, right? Like that, that's like when I marry Katie, when I get an Australian passport, you know, the Middle East becomes so much easier to travel in with, with their passport versus the U.S. So, that it, you know, right. nice, nice added benefit when you marry a, a foreigner. So, well, thank you so much. I'll give you your final words. Like say whatever you want because the world is going to watch this series. The floor is yours, Jen. Okay, well, I guess what I would have to say is wherever you are, whatever you're doing right now, I hope you're enjoying this time because a lot of people are working hard for you to be safe. That's something that's been really touching for me. So take this time as a gift for you, whether you're at home with someone you love or totally alone. Take time to read, to think, to contact people, and also be very thankful for all those people who are out there taking care of the sick people, maybe send messages, do something, but realize that your break time is coupled with somebody who's working 24 hours a day to keep you safe. So I think of like my, my, my doctor friends right now and I just like pray that they, <laughs> that they're safe and they're getting everything they, that they need. So. Yeah. yeah. No, that, very well said. Very well said. Jen, thank you so much. And uh, guys, if you need, if you want to watch a great workout class, Jen goes live all the time. Check out her Instagram page. She crushes yeah. you want to get your butt kicked. 
She she's the one to do it. So uh, yes, just, come work out with me. <laughs> oh heck yeah! Also, episodes coming up. Mason, I saw a comment. Mason was asking Mason, we got at least a couple weeks of these episodes, man. I'm excited. So in 12 hours, we're headed to Canada. Uh, we got one of wow. my friends will be joining us, and then tomorrow night in Singapore time, so tomorrow morning in the states, we're headed to Bangladesh. So in 24 hours, we're going to be talking to uh, my couch surfing host who lives in a, a, a small village um, just outside, quite, you know, about four hour train ride from Dhaka. So fingers crossed his cell phone works and uh, we, we can speak to him tomorrow. But guys, with that, thank you for watching this episode. Make sure to uh, stay safe, stay at home, stay inside, wash your hands, and uh, let's get through this together. Jen, take care, and uh, I'm excited for our reunion one of these days. Until of then, course. stay safe, all right? Bye. Okay, no <laughs>